following days of U.S. complaints about foot dragging and even outright hindrance by some Mexican police officials, word tonight from Mexico that three people are now under arrest in connection with this month's kidnapping of a U.S. drug enforcement agent. Rita Braver looks at the latest in the case that has produced a lot of cross-border cross-talk. In response to heavy pressure from Washington, Mexican police in Tijuana late today announced the arrest of three suspects in the kidnapping of an American DEA agent. All three are Mexican police agents, and it's believed that the American agent was working on a drug case that led into the Mexican police. In recent days, Mexican agents have been destroying drug crops, but some U.S. officials say the Mexican government has not been aggressive enough. They charge that earlier Mexican police sabotaged the search for agent Enrique Camarena Salazar. For example, the DEA asked Mexican authorities to arrest alleged top cocaine smuggler Juan Mata Ballesteros on February 14th. But police didn't show up at his Mexico City apartment for three days, and by then he was gone. Another suspect, Rafael Caro Quintero, was spotted by the DEA as he was preparing to depart the Guadalajara airport. We asked that he be detained. Uh, because there was a warrant outstanding uh, for this individual, uh, Carol Quintero. Uh, there was a confrontation between uh, different units of the Mexican uh, police forces, the DFS and the Mexican Federal Judicial Police, and after some discussion, he was allowed to depart. His current whereabouts are unknown. Mullen made those harsh remarks despite administration efforts to play down tensions with its important ally. A broad range of U.S. officials believes that drug dealers have corrupted some elements within the Mexican government, especially within the police. But that is talked about quietly in diplomatic circles. Sources say at one point last week, National Security Advisor Robert McFarlane told Mullen not to hit the Mexicans too hard. The Justice Department for a week pressed for President Reagan to call Mexican President Miguel de la Madrid to urge a better effort to find the agent. But it was de la Madrid who finally called President Reagan to complain about long delays at the Mexican border. U.S. Customs officials were searching incoming cars looking for any clues on Camarina. The searches have now been scaled back, but Mr. Reagan is said to have warned that there could be a tourist advisory warning Americans against travel to Mexico if sufficient progress is not made on the Camarina investigation. Rita Braver, CBS News, New York. Federal prosecutors in Los Angeles have released transcripts of tape recordings said to have been made by Mexican kidnappers who killed a U.S. drug agent in 1985. Jerry Bowen has the story. The newly disclosed evidence in the more than three-year-old torture murder case of DEA agent Enrique Camarena and his Mexican pilot graphically details the unrelenting interrogation by his Mexican captors. The two days of beatings and questioning tape recorded at the estate of one of his accused killers outside Guadalajara indicate his kidnappers wanted to know what drug agents knew of this man, reputed Mexican drug baron Rafael Caro Quintero, and other top-level members of the so-called Mexican drug family, wanted the names of informers. What had he reported on Quintero and the others, the interrogator asked. I have not reported them, sir, responded Camarena, because for the same reason that I don't, I did not want trouble. I just wanted to get out of here. The transcript indicates the tape recorder was shut off when Camarena was beaten, that he pleaded for his family not to be harmed pleaded for the beatings to stop. Camarena to his interrogator. Even though one might not want to, one remembers with the beating you have just given me. And as I am remembering, I will tell you everything I know. American officials have long been frustrated by the pace of Mexico's investigation of the case. Surely there has been very slow progress, if any, by our standards, by our American judicial and court standards. It's going extremely slowly. Still awaiting trial for allegedly ordering the murder is drug kingpin Quintero, being held in Mexico City with another suspect. An escape attempt by the pair last fall was headed off when authorities discovered tunnels being dug near their prison. On this side of the border, three Mexican nationals are coming to trial in Los Angeles, and American drug agents continue to crack down on suspected associates of the Mexican drug family. The latest arrest last month in Arizona included an alleged major marijuana trafficker. Jerry Bowen, CBS News, Los Angeles. Get 
métase de reversa, métase de reversa.
Fernández, que métase de reversa, métase de reversa. with uh, uh, Camarena.
verga, ¿no? Manojos, ponerla ahí. Rápido, rápido. Vamos. Ahora sí, nos llegan. Arrancar con. En algunos ya, ya fue recogido, ¿no? ¿eh? Una raya. Hay más, 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 hay Vamos a proceder a incinerar. Por favor, atrás de una raya, nadie se cerca un poco más, se da el clamazo. Claro, con mucho gusto. Necesita lanzarla como jabalina. Como jabalina. No, 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 tú, 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 de vamos, va a salir en televisión.
¿Identificó usted el camarero? ¿Hay una identificación, doctor? ¿Tú corres? Tú échale hasta donde lleguemos. Ahorita le insistimos. Miren, espero que un poquito, ahorita regresamos, ¿eh? That, that's an inside, inside story. Hi there. Um, how, how do you, you want to, do you want to ask me questions beforehand or you want me to talk about what we know on the situation? Or? Okay, uh, uh, Juan uh, Mata 
Ballesteros is uh, perhaps one of the most significant cocaine traffickers in the world. Uh, he is an individual uh, who escaped from a uh, facility in, in the United States, in Florida, uh, 13 years ago. Uh, is an individual who has been of significant interest uh, uh, to DEA uh, because of, of his um, position as a major cocaine trafficker. Uh, he is the, the leadership of the Padrino organization. Padrino, Operation Padrino. Uh, we had seized uh, assets uh, in excess of, of $26 million from that particular organization. Uh, so indeed, we think that the, um, the arrest of, of uh, Juan Matabayasteros by the Colombian National Police uh, last evening was most significant. It was a, uh, uh, a joint effort. Uh, DEA and the Colombian National Police, uh, our good friend uh, General Delgado, and uh, it is most reassuring to us because this was uh, part of the confirmation of the commitment that the Colombian government gave us when President Betancourt uh, met with Attorney General Meese, that as far as the government of Colombia was concerned, there was no turning back. Uh, this is clear indication that the, the Colombian government uh, uh, has uh, made that determination and, and uh, indeed will continue to move forward. It is interesting uh, uh, when the arrest of uh, Juan Mata Ballesteros uh, was made yesterday, uh, Mr. Ballesteros uh, offered a, the equivalent of a $450,000 payoff to representatives of the Colombian National Police uh, to unarrest him. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure where. I, I mean, it was just an offer. Right? He didn't say, I will I'll give you a, my master charge. Yeah. Can you go over the facts as you know him at the time he was found exactly where he was? Uh, Elaine, uh, we had been working very, uh, very closely with the Columbia National Police uh, uh, beginning in the, the second week in February uh, after. Uh, Juan Matabayasteros left from Mexico City. As you may recall, uh, he had been located uh, uh, in a residence in Mexico City. Uh, at that time, we had uh, solicited the help of the Mexican Federal Judicial Police to effect his arrest. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Ballesteros uh, escaped from Mexico City. Since that time, we have uh, been working uh, diligently to uh, determine where he has been located and uh, in some recent successes with the Columbia National Police we uh, believe that he was located in Cartagena. Uh, the Mexican National Police went to Cartagena uh, and in fact uh, affected the arrest. It was in a, in a, in a house in, in Cartagena. The Mexican or the Colombian? Colombia National Police, I'm sorry. Who was there with him? Um, Mary, I'm not sure. Were, were they, were they I'm, Mary, I, I don't know. Were there any weapons seized? Uh, paperwork, was, paperwork was seized, some documents was see, were seized, but uh, uh, right now we have no information about, uh, about any weapons. Uh, uh, as those of you who were there at the hearing this morning remembered that uh, uh, this is uh, this is information that was only confirmed within the past two hours uh, uh, by uh, by uh, our office. So uh, our information at this point uh, is not as detailed as it could be. What happens to him now? Uh, we are um, uh, there is a process outstanding. Uh, on, uh, on Juan Matabayasteros here in the United States. Uh, we are uh, working closely with the Criminal Division of the Department of Justice and uh, several U.S. Attorney's offices around the country. Uh, 
uh, anticipating uh, that we will seek uh, his extradition. Uh, I understand that uh, his extradition is, is also being sought by, by several other, co other countries. Uh, we are also uh, uh, continue our, effort, our efforts based upon information that we have received uh, that uh, he has a, uh, a significant amount of money deposited in a number of banks uh, around the world, and we are moving forward on that aspect of the investigation. Did you say he escaped from? He escaped from a, a um, minimum security prison in Florida uh, 13 years ago. Now, where that it was um, Why was there? Elgin Air Force Base. He, he was there on a passport violation and, and walked away from the facility. Was he, where is he wanted in the United States? In New York? Uh, he's wanted on the escape charge in Florida, and uh, we are uh, uh, the uh, Southern District of New York. Uh, and it, it, it's a conspiracy. Interested in extraditing him? Um, I'm sure Mexico. Uh, I'm, I, I don't know which other countries. He is a citizen of Honduras. Uh, he is not a is not a Mexican citizen. Do you want him in connection though with the uh, Cameroon killing? Uh, at, at this point, uh, we are uh, um, hopeful of extraditing. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ballesteros because of the, uh, the conspiracy charges. What sort of conspiracy was that? This was a, uh, uh, I think it was a conspiracy involving a cocaine case, a major cocaine case here in the United States. How old a case? I'm sorry? Where does that case date from? Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to get that information for you. Well, what about the role in the, in the Camarilla? Is he considered a prime suspect? Uh, as you may recall, with the abduction of, of, uh, of Camarena, uh, we were uh, actively seeking the major traffickers in Mexico uh, who were um, using Mexico as a safe haven, even though he is not a Mexican citizen. He was one of the, the prime uh, targets uh, for us in, in Mexico City, and, and that's the reason we were, uh, in Mexico rather, and that's the reason we were very anxious for um, uh, him to be uh, uh, interrogated by the Mexican Federal Ju Judicial Police uh, within three or four days after the abduction of Camarena. Has there been information developed subsequent to that that does link him? We have, we have been developing uh, significant information on the Camarena case uh, over the past uh, two months, uh, the nature of which I uh, would best not talk about because it is a pending investigation. Is there any danger that uh, Mexico or some other country will get him extradited? No, I, I wouldn't consider it a danger. Uh, I think uh, that the, the Mexican government uh, may be interested in his extradition, but uh, uh, even were he to be extradited in Mexico, we would indeed ask, uh, ask the Mexican government uh, that he uh, subsequently be extradited to the United States. Uh, who owned the place he was uh, at Cartagena? Is that one of the Colombian traffickers, or is it his own safe house? Uh, Elaine, I, I don't know at this point, uh, but I, I'll, I'll let you know when I find out. As I say, what we have uh, we have is not very detailed. Well, do you have any information that while he's in Colombia, he was working with a part of the Colombian cartel? Uh, on the basis of this arrest, no. But certainly, we have significant information uh, uh, on on the uh, on his organization, and he indeed was uh, part of a uh, uh, major. Uh, cocaine trafficking organization with uh, uh, tentacles in in Colombia. You say you were looking to identify bank accounts in, around the world in which you put money. Once you identify them, is there any way that you can uh, take control of those assets? Uh, yes, ma'am. In, th in those countries where we have uh, we have the uh, agreements. Uh, we, we certainly can, if we can identify the assets, uh, the monies will, will be seized by the host country. The host country is over there. Yes. The right. Uh, without divulging the significant information that's been developed since February 7th, uh, 
any more than you have to answer the question. Um, <laughs> can, can you give us some idea of what his role is, believed to be, in, in the abduction and, and killing of Camarena and the pilot? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I best not, I best not get into the uh, the status. Uh, the, there's no there's no point in our talking about uh, uh, information that at some point may have to be used in a, in a court of law. Well, do we know that he's a suspect at all in the whole thing? Is he a suspect in that? Most certainly a suspect. Well, he is definitely a suspect. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, he is. What is his relationship with uh, Carol Cantero? Are they associates or uh, part of the same operation? <laughs> Uh, no, he, he uh, as I say, he is he is one of the major cocaine traffickers in the world with direct uh, uh, links uh, to uh, Felix Gallardo. Felix Gallardo, of course, uh, uh, has had his name uh, directly mentioned in connection uh, with the uh, uh, confessions obtained by the, uh, the Mexican government in the abduction of, uh, of uh, Special Agent Camarena and Captain Zavala. Uh, uh, Felix Gallardo uh, is a, a subordinate, a subordinate in the in the organization of uh, Juan Matabiasteros. And that's the Padrino. That's the Padrino organization. organization. Yeah. What was his position in that? Uh, what is his position in that organization? Is there any kind of ranking that? Um, Juan Matabiasteros, as I say, is the most significant figure in in that in that triumvirate. Well, uh, well, let me say, uh, well, I guess, no, no comment. Uh, uh, yeah, of the, I guess it is, it is um, Juan Mata Ballesteros, Felix Gallardo. Felix Gallardo, of course, then would have been, would have been working with, uh, with, um, Carl Quintero, but whether we can consider that a triumvirate, in spite of my. Is Carl part of the Padrino? That's what we call him. We believe so. And Ballesteros is the top dog? Juan Mata Ballesteros is the top dog. Will he, will he be charged in the Padrino cases that are under investigation in Texas? Uh, at, at this point, Elaine, we're trying to get all of that background uh, information together, working with the criminal division of the department. Uh, uh, but there's a possibility if he came, if he was, if he was successful in extraditing him here, then he would be tried on the, there's a possibility to be tried on the connection with, with the killing Camarina. Thing. Well, as we, as we had mentioned earlier, I think uh, Steve Trott addressed that issue uh, uh, six or seven weeks ago, right after the abduction. We sat down with the criminal division of the department and talked about uh, the potential for extradition to the United States, only to, to make sure that we had the, we had the procedure and, and what was necessary in line. In that regard, um, it, it is a possibility. We are not now looking at that as a probability. Now, are we still seeking the extradition of Carol? No, we, we have never begun any extradition proceedings on, on uh, Carol Quintero. Again, we explored the possibilities. We looked at the, at the weight of, of the evidence that, that we had. And uh, uh, with the uh, activities in Mexico, uh, we have done nothing further on the extradition of Carol Quintero into the United States. Did you describe him as definitely being a member of Padrino? Yes, ma'am. This means that of the four names that we put out at the beginning who were top traffickers related in some way to the Camarena abduction, three of them are now uh, That's right. being it, held in custody. At this point in time, uh, Felix Gallardo is the, is the fourth, and, uh, and hopefully uh, Felix Gallardo will be in custody in the not too distant future. Can you say you know where he is? is uh, no, if I if I knew specifically where he was, I would be announcing that uh, all four were in custody. Was this one of the questions? Was this information developed uh, that led to his arrest? Was this DEA developed information 
Or was this something that Colombian National Police did? Uh, well, I, I pre prefer to characterize it as information that we had developed uh, mutually, uh, working mutually uh, with the Colombian National Police. We work very closely with them, have worked very closely with them. Um, uh, and uh, in that regard, this was certainly a joint effort. Uh, and, uh, Were DE uh, agents uh, on the scene at the arrest lurking nearby? Now you you know better you know better than that. You don't know anything more about the circumstances of the arrest, whether there was any violence. Or no, there, there, I, I know there was no violence, but the actual circumstances, the time of day was approximately uh, late afternoon. Um, but the, the, the physical uh, arrest, the hands-on arrest, uh, I don't have any direct information. Today is a uh, is a holiday in Colombia, so uh, uh, that's the reason we're having difficulty getting. Uh, Getting, uh... He is in jail. Yes, yes, ma'am. He is in jail. Is the fourth man Fonseca also a member of Padrino? Um, Ernesto Fonseca. Yes, he was. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. strongly one against the other, and um, I, as president, govern for all Mexicans, no matter to which party they belong. But I have told the leaders of the PRI that the only way for this party to remain democratically in power is to modernize itself, to change its procedures, to deliver more to the demands of the population, and to act as um, elected officials in the way that the population wants them to act. Reform is the only way for the PRI to continue responding to Mexican population's demand, and even that is not assured. Competition is there, and competition for the better. Mr. President, what action is the government of Mexico considering to remedy the alleged violation of its territorial integrity in the kidnapping of one of its citizens who is now being held in a Los Angeles jail, accused in the murder of a United States Drug Enforcement agent? We have asked the U.S. government for information relating to this matter. I have said that my government will be firm in defending legality in Mexico. And if anyone pretends to do otherwise, we will revise our frame of uh, action. We will go as far as may be necessary to protect our laws and the interest of the Mexican population. We need more cooperation at the international level. But you do not uphold the law with illegal acts, and neither pretending to apply your own law in another country, or worse, acting elsewhere against your own law. 
we have um, acted very strongly in this particular case of Mr. Camarena, and if necessary, we will continue doing so. 28, 28 people are in jail today related solely to the murder of Mr. Camarena. They are already in jail, these 28 suspects. I don't know if you call them suspects when they are already in jail. And their sentences range from 155 years to 136 years to 118 years to 81 years in prison to 66 to 95 years. No one will be above the law in Mexico, neither Mexican nor foreigner. Mr. President, once they're in jail, they're no longer suspects. They're convicted felons in our country. Very good. Same in, as in ours. Matter of translation. Mr. <laughs> Mr. President, have you detected any significant evidence of flight capital coming back to Mexico? Yes, very strongly. The reaction to the economic program we have now in progress has been very positive the debt renegotiation, the reduction of inflation from almost 200 percent in 87 to less than 20 percent last year. But mainly, it's the seriousness of our policy that is convincing investors that things in Mexico are changing for the better and are changing on a permanent basis. We have estimated that last year, capital return to Mexico on a figure above two and a half billion dollars. We would like to see more of it returning. The information we have is that it is doing so. And at the same time that capital is returning, foreign investment is also growing in Mexico. After we changed the rules for foreign investment around May of last year, it increased to a level of almost three billion. And this year, it's also growing. We need more foreign investment in Mexico. We need more return capital in Mexico. And I am convinced that while we continue with this very tight and disciplined fiscal policy, which gives the highest priority to reducing the public sector deficit, which as I mentioned before will reach this year only 1% of GDP, the lowest in a quarter of a century, we will continue stimulating this capital return to Mexico, and therefore the process of investment and job creation that my country so much needs. Mr. Pre Mr. President, does your government welcome U.S. volunteers working in the barrios, or is it a potential source of disruption to your administration? Could you ask the first part? Okay. Does your government welcome United States volunteers working in the barrios, or is it a potential source of disruption to your administration? Anyone, anyone who wants to commit him or herself with the process of development and change that we have today in Mexico is welcomed as long as he or she, either Mexican or foreign, behaves according to our law, respects the traditions and values of our community. I insist anyone is welcome to our country. Mr. President, we know of another president who is trying to radically reform the economy of his country, to instill initiative in his workforce, and to stimulate modernization. His name is Gorbachev. How does his challenge differ from yours? <laughs> well, I believe each one responds to its own circumstance. I have responded to mine in a country with a enormous problems accumulated due to the crisis, but also due to the lack of an adequate response in the past to social needs. Living close to such an important country as the US and close to such an important region 
as Latin, Central and South America. At the same time, I believe that Mr. Gorbachev has been bold enough to take the actions and decisions that respond mainly to the interest of his own people. And anyone who has the responsibility to be head of state, I'm sure, is worried mainly about the well-being of its own population. I respond to the needs and demands of the Mexican population, and I will continue doing so. Mr. President, one last question, and it's an appropriate question for this audience. How do you see the role of the press in your country as a supporter of your changes or as a separate critical institution? I believe it's very supportive of the changes I'm introducing because it's very critical of them. <laughs> well, actually not very critical, but uh, I believe that only, only if you have free press, you can really know where you're standing. That is the only way to be sure that the decisions you are taking are really responding to the people's demands and to the best interest of your country will depend on whether you have or you do not have a free press. I am proud that in Mexico you are free to express any of your views with total freedom and you know that you will be respected and even, even more important, you will be listened to. I read and listen more than I talk. And that's uh, why it's so important for me to have a free press and also the freedom of Mexicans to express themselves. Freedom is a value that we cherish so much that no matter how much my country changes, it will always remain free because that's precisely what we want to be.